Tell me, Grace, about the title, Bud Light and Bammy. What does that, what does that signify? Uh, okay, I think we started talking about a working title, which was like the musical of my life. And I think because uh, I work a lot uh, in my mind with lyrics and how they bounce off each other, you know? And, and we spoke and I thought, okay, in the studio, we were with Ivor working on uh, the Hurricane album and Bloodlight is, is the name that the musicians gave when the red light is on in the studio. You know, it's a red light blinking and Sly and Robbie said, Bloodlight! That means you can't go into the studio because it's blood light. That means we're recording and you can't go in. And Bami, uh, at the end of the day, um, I thought, I'm a Bami girl. <laughs> so yeah, festival, if you get jerk chicken in Jamaica, hey, hey, you're, you're a festival girl, I can tell already. So you get the jerk chicken, right? And you know, Paul, you were there. Paul, you were there. So it's like, okay. Festival or Bami? Okay. And I'm a Bami girl. You're a Bami girl. Well, tell me about the beginnings of the film. It's, been, it's taken a few years to make. So what was it like going through those many years to make this film? Did sometimes you think maybe I don't want to finish it or did you, you know, think eventually you'll no, we'll finish it? We never thought about beginning or finishing. It was a process that had a life of its own. And um, it was like an amniosynthesis, you know? So it started and it had a life of its own. And we just um, followed what it told us that it wanted to do. And what did you want from the film? What did you want it to say? I didn't, know, I didn't know what I wanted. I never really wanted it to be uh, from beginning either. You know, it, it was just um, meeting with Sophie uh, from my brother's film. And I thought, we should do this. Let's do it. Mm. And that was, the, that was the beginning of it. It just started on its own, like, like uh, if you have sex to make a baby. <laughs> you, you don't think about uh, whether it's a boy or going to be a girl. You just, you have the sex. <laughs> well, you know, as Grace is saying, we conceived this baby together and uh, we didn't know what it would become. <laughs> Um, so I didn't have an agenda. We followed the yellow brick road, you know? And uh, that's the beauty of making documentary where you're not in control, you're in the moment. People say to me, were you scared when Grace was shouting at Robbie? I'm like, no, I was thinking, is it sharp? Is the, is the audio recorded correctly? Is the frame good? Should I move the frame? Mm. And I'm also like enjoying feeling Grace on the other side of my camera. Mm -hmm. And it's just something that's kind of organic. Uh, you create all this footage. And about, after about four or five years, I decided <laughs> that I had like the shape of something and I didn't know what. <laughs> but I said to Grace, um, I need your performance in it too. And I've got this stupid little camera in a bag that's this big. And this performance is huge and I need more Mm. I need bigger tools for the performance. What about that thing about stepping into someone's psyche about making a documentary? Because you've done that many times with many different sorts of people. You know, what's it like stepping into Grace's psyche and, and, and having that basically something you're representing? Well, you know, um, it's, um, it's, it's a journey. It is a, it is a kind of a journey. And I just try to be as open as I can in every moment and to think, you know, am I, am I open enough to this moment? You know, have I seen this moment? Have I captured this? Mm. 
And then when you get to the edit, you're compressing time. You're compressing a 40-minute conversation on the mm -hmm. phone or mm -hmm. you know, a two-hour dinner. Mm -hmm. You're compressing it to seven minutes, yeah. to five minutes, mm -hmm. and there's just a huge amount of compression. So you, you're re it's like making a sauce. You try to get it so we, that every scene has got a really strong flavor. We, I think it's a part of Grace's <laughs> legacy that, she, that, that is under underemphasized from time to time that you know a lot of it, it really it be, in a lot of ways it begins and ends with the music if the music's no good from back in the compass point days then the rest of it doesn't have a firm foundation to stand on and i think that the way sophie has approached the music in the film is really fantastic in that way because in some ways it does underpin everything else that's going on and you know something i'm always at pains to say is grace is a great musician you know, we, we, it's, a lot of it's about music, and uh, it's important to say because it often gets overlooked, I think. Yeah, I think it's an extraordinary, extraordinary film because it shows Grace as a Gesamtkunstwerk. You know, it's this German word, Gesamtkunstwerk, which is a total work of art. And, um, <laughs> and the seamlessness, no, which we go from fashion to music to film yeah, I mean. and to make so many connections, no, of disciplines is key to innovation, imagination, and, and genius. But I wanted to ask a first question, actually. And Grace, can you maybe talk a little bit about this idea of the, of the capsule? Because you said in an interview the other day that uh, time is like a space capsule. We are in space, not time. But we are. <laughs> we are, we, no, we, no, I, I did say that because uh, I swim a lot, and I find that when I'm, I don't like to be in the sea where my feet touch the sand. And I need to go in the deepest part of the sea, which gives me the total feeling of being in space. So whether, but oh, I mean, I might sound really freaking crazy if you don't know how to swim. <laughs> I'm sorry, but. Everybody. Oh, if you don't know how to float, actually, you can swim but not float. But there's this fear that I know from people that are can swim but cannot float and are afraid of what is in the deepest part of the sea. For, for me, it's the space. When I go in this space, it's outer space. It's the same thing, you know? And I think that's why, you know, I don't uh, have any lines Actually, on your face, you mean? On my face, on my body, everywhere. <laughs> no, I think there is something to do with uh, this, uh, with this space. That you are just <sighs> sharks underneath, and and there's no limits. And that is it, no limit of what? There's, there's, no, there's is, no bottom. There's no limit. No, there's no, exactly. Yeah, there is no limit, except you know that the sharks are there. <laughs> there. And you see the stars and, you know. But it's, it's the kind of space that allows you to really let go. One unrealized project, why you passed on the priest role in the original Blade Runner. Why? why oh. Would, yeah. That's oh. a question from Arthur J. Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh oh. It's not in my book, Paul. That it we is, did. actually, yeah. All right, so. I read it by now. <laughs> it's in the book. I was in love. I was in love. And love, and in love, in art. I'm sorry, I had a bit of red wine to drink, so excuse me. <laughs> Yeah, um, I believe uh, there was a bit of com competition between, between uh, Jean-Paul and Ridley Scott at the time. I got caught in the middle. 
and I was in love with the other guy. <laughs> you know, so and we were very much in uh, in the arts. Art groupie, as I call, I was an art groupie, I still am. And um, it was, oh, they're gonna exploit you. You're going to be, oh, commercial. I was like, ooh, commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Sophie, when you were making the film, you know, tell me something about the idea, almost as a how-to situation. What is it like to collaborate with Grace Jones? Well, I think a lot of it is, um, is uh, it's actually about uh, kind of a meeting in a place that might not be verbal. Because, you know, when we were doing this performance in the film, you know, Grace didn't really want to talk too much about it. Um, she didn't want to analyse it. Mm. She needed the conditions mm. that actually was the benefit of having spent a long time watching Grace's performance, talking to her about what she felt about theatre, about light, and about being a storyteller, and I tried to bring all these things into give, making the conditions. Yeah. Um, because so it's really about you know listening to what she says, and kind of in, in, and uh, sort of you know folding that back in to making the conditions. Um, it was total trust, mm. total trust. For me, the key is trust. Working with Grace, and I've I've experienced it working with her myself and witnessing her working with other people and she lets you do your thing so you can provide the ground mm -hmm. certainly in terms of music it means I'm free to provide the ground and then Grace comes and then the ground will start to shift but it's all about <laughs> well, <laughs> well, it's one, true. Thing, one thing I would say that I loved watching was how Grace in the true. studio you find some of the language through your body through the sound is like a kind of like when you were doing the hurricane mm. and you were like I descend from the sky come down from this like how are the words cutting physically in the kind of muscles of your mm. face so it's a kind of very physical inhabiting of language if I feel what's in your heart and go just go for it what's in your heart as if you're uh, as an artist, um, you just have to let the the art talk to you. It's got to speak to you, and you follow that. I don't know. Does it make sense? I let the art speak to me. 